you have spent a lot of time reading about and researching and speaking to powerful people. Who do you think really runs the world? You're going to go there, huh, with the question. Who do I think runs the world? Um, so I used to ask the question. I said, who, who's got the most power uh, in America? Is it Congress? Is it President? Is it the CEOs of virtual governments? We're talking Google, Twitter, Facebook, you know, those guys, Amazon, you know, or is it billionaires? Okay, you know, the most richest man in the world. Who's got the most power? And you'd be amazed how few people say president. Because they come and go, you know? The famous quote with Putin that he says, you know, American presidents, you don't have to worry about it. They're going to be there four to eight years. Some suits are running, you know, and run the country behind closed doors. And he's got a very good point when he says something like that, Putin. But to me, there are a lot of alliances being built. So if you and I were to think about aspirational type of people, okay, you know how they say, you know, well, Michael Jackson eventually got to a point where he got so many different girls that he started trying with this and he started trying with this. And a lot of these people in Hollywood have so much sex with so many different people that they become creative mm. and they do dumb things, mm. right? Okay. Tiger Woods, the reason why he got these girls, because what do you know what it is to be the greatest golf golfer in the world? And everybody throws their panties at you. you. You want to judge a guy like that? Why don't you go be the greatest golfer and see what it feels like to be one out of eight billion? You don't know what it's like. So they're kind of trying and experimenting with all this stuff, right? It's almost like I'm so much in a prison jail. Everybody's watching what I'm doing. I'm going to break the rules a little bit to see what I'm capable of mm -hmm. doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so let's go process and dissect some of these guys that make all the money in the world. Okay. You become a billionaire. And you're still dangerously ambitious, not from a good place, but more selfish place. Okay. You took over an industry. Now you're worth $5 billion. Now you're worth 10. If you're a billionaire, you're the best at what you do in your space for the most part, or you help build the best in that space for the most part. Okay. Cool. So maybe your marriage didn't work out. Maybe you're not the best father in the world. And you're like, well, I want more control. I want more power. I can't be a president. I don't want to be a president because if I run for president, they're going to reveal the things that I've done in my life. And God forbid, if that gets all the light, I don't want that. That's embarrassing. But you know what I'm going to do? What if I can take over the world? Aren't there other people like me that are driven by wanting to take over the world? What if we could make the world one place and we make all the decisions for everybody because I'm probably one of the smartest people in the world. I'm probably, and you know, that conversation is taking place. Again, you really start having that godlike figure. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with George Soros. You know, in one of the interviews he gave to LA Times, he says, I always fancied myself with being a god. Fancied myself with being a god. This is an LA Times interview 20 plus years ago. If you type in George Soros, LA Times God, it's the most disturbing interview to read about this guy. A lot of people are very skeptical about him, right? He's well, like the boogeyman of a, a number of conspiracies. How many, how many people have you heard say, I always fancied myself with being a god? He says, but what's great about where I'm at right now is it's no longer a dream. It's not a it became a reality. Yeah. I have a friend who has spent a lot of time with super, super powerful people. And he told me about a meeting that he had with one individual in particular who spoke about being an apex predator. He said that apex predators don't care about prey. And even though the prey that he was referring to was still his own species, it was really haunting the story the way that that was told to me because you had someone who not only had the motivation to be able to go and enact whatever nefarious mm -hmm, malicious mm -hmm. plan but also had the actual resources to be able to go and do it, right? Those two things together are, they're scary. And that was something that really opened my eyes. I'm very non-conspiratorial in the way that I think I, I, I always lean toward, you know, do not attribute to malice that which can be explained by stupidity. Do not attribute to coordination that which can be explained by coincidence. Uh, and yet the more that I read and the more that I learn about things, the more there there seems to be there, right? Yeah, you know, people are offended by different things. Um, some people being offended in their deepest insecurities, they're willing to use their ambitions to go to certain levels 
that at that point, they're not thinking about the consequences of ruining a lot of people's lives. That's not something they're thinking about at that level. So Hitler was offended. When you read Mein Kampf for you, study what Hitler did, he was simply offended. Somebody offended him. So his entire life was about doing what he did just because he was offended. Now, most people who are offended, they do what? They forget about it and they move on. Some of these guys want control. Some of these guys want to make decisions for you. Some of these guys on the money side, at least they go and make money to get power. Some people don't go make money to get power. Some people, Klaus Schwab, they're like, no, I'm not going to go make money to get power. I'm going to get power by creating laws and thinking I know what's best for you. So there's a lot of different people that you can put in these types of organization. You just have to think. Like if you were to think about the commission of the mob, always go back to it. Lucky Luciano created a commission where the five families, he was the one that ran the commission, right, of the five families. Okay. When you think about what meetings in the world happens where all the powerful people show up, you got the G20, you got the UN, you Davos. got the World Economic, you got Davos, you got all these guys that come together, you got NATO, you got... So NATO could be like, well, NATO's uh, original when the 12 or 14 countries were part of NATO. What was it really all about? To fight USSR. There is no USSR. Why are we still funding it? What's the outcome now? Are we still fighting communism? So what a lot of people might say is that those organizations are so obvious that they can't be the ones where the real shit's happening, right? That's just the smokescreen. The real shit is the shit that's behind it and the shit that's behind that and so on and so forth. In your opinion, do you think that NATO, WEF, WHO, that's those people. There's no further up set of strings that are playing the ventriloquized game behind those ones. Do you think that that's where a lot of power actually lies? Uh, I don't know. Mm. What I will say, listening to you, is with the questions you're asking, I think there's a reason why the audience wants to hear what you think about what's going on right now, because you're asking some heavy questions mm. right now, mm -hmm. which means you're curious. And if I'm the audience, I would like to know what you can come up with if you took a deeper dive and really wanted to get into these types of, mm -hmm. you know, informations. But, you know, think about what things people are most addicted to, okay? Addictive personalities, video games, porn, sex, cocaine, ecstasy, weed, steroids, partying, all of that stuff. But what's one of the most addicting things? that many of those guys can't get. Power, are you kidding me? Power is like, power porn, the porn of having a lot of power and getting the look in people that look at you that are afraid of you, some people love that. Some people love that. You know the quote, like if you really wanna test someone's character, give them power. I mean, mm -hmm. some people really love having power. Take a company and see some of the guys that they hired. They hired the wrong person at the top. The guy was all driven by power. What happens? Take a president that becomes a president and he realizes he can, he can use the justice system against his opponent. What happens? Mm. They got that power. It's a lot of power to give to somebody, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, those people I believe are out there. Some of them are 100% money people because money talks and you can have Ultimately, a lot of influence. You need funds them. to do yeah, anything, you do. right? You do. It's, it's going to be the money people. Um, but there's also the other power players behind closed doors that, you know, in the in the movie Moneyball, uh, Jonah Hill plays, the, I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, he plays the role of the guy that Brad Pitt is sitting there saying, why is this GM of Cleveland Indians keeps looking at that guy? <laughs> Doesn't get on base. Who the hell are you, right? In, in John John Maxwell or, or, or Dale Carnegie wrote about this in a book saying the law of E.F. Hutton. E.F. Hutton was in the room that every time the guy was making a decision, he wouldn't make a decision until he asked about E.F. Hutton. So, so here's what we're going to tell you. So, so, so a proposal? Okay, great. Hey, E.F. Hutton, what do you think about it? Okay, we're not going to be doing it. Great. The world is filled with E. Like Henry Kissinger. I don't know how much you know about Henry Kissinger. That guy's an E.F. Hutton, if there ever was one. There's a lot of those guys that are the brains behind the faces that we see. And most of the times, the best E.F. Huttons, no one ever finds out who they were. No one ever finds out who those guys are. We'll get back to talking to Patrick in one minute, but first, I need to tell you about Element. 
Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium with no junk, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, or any other BS. It is a healthy alternative to sugary electrolyte drinks, and it's how I've started my morning every single day for over three years now. You don't need coffee first thing in the morning. Your adenosine system that caffeine acts on isn't even active for the first 90 minutes of the day, but your adrenal system is, and salt acts on your adrenal system. Best of all, they have a no BS, no questions asked refund policy where you can buy it and try it completely risk-free. And if you do not like it for any reason, they will give you your money back and you don't even need to return the box. Right now, you can get a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box by going to the link in the description below or heading to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. That's drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Patrick, then press here for the full length, over two hour long podcast. Go on, give it a press.